I spend a lot of time on music production and tech YouTube, both as a creator and as a viewer. I love gadgets. I love coverage of gadgets. I love seeing how tech is advancing and I love seeing how tech can be used creatively. And of course, gear reviews are my bread and butter on this channel, that and tutorials and demonstrations and all that kind of stuff. But there are some serious problems with music production gear reviews that make me a bit uncomfortable with this whole niche. And this is something I want to just put in your brain to help you think more critically as you consume content. I've alluded to this before on the channel, but I've got some serious issues with the consumerism that can accompany music production gear discourse. A lot of people get into music production gear to make music, whether they want something more hands-on or different sonic capabilities or something like that. They can end up fixating on the gear and spending all their time obsessing over which gear to get and spending a ton of money and time on new gear that they otherwise probably would have spent just making music. I don't want to discount the fact that uh, there are people who just want to collect. I don't get it, but I can respect it. And also, don't put pressure on yourself to release music if you're not a professional musician. I personally find it incredibly fulfilling to put out music consistently, but not everyone has those priorities, and I want to acknowledge that up front. But this is directed at people who do want to make music, but can find the gear getting in the way. Because here's the problem with synth and Groovebox and drum machine and software and plugins and all that other kind of stuff. Here's the problem with coverage of that on YouTube. It shifts the emphasis. Simply by existing and by being watched by you, music gear reviews can shift your focus from the creative process to the gear itself if you're not careful. And I'm going to back that up. The main reason for this is the fact that content algorithms give you more concentrated versions of the stuff you are already consuming. So if they see that you're engaging with some music gear reviews, watching more of them, it'll keep recommending them to you. And if you watch those, it'll keep recommending more of them to you. And over time, your content consumption might be just full of music gear reviews. And that's already starting to prime you to think about that as a primary focus. This is a really well-known phenomenon when it comes to content algorithms. And in its darkest form, it can send people down deep rabbit holes that alter the way that they think. In this case, it's fairly innocuous, but it can create some really unhealthy buying habits if you actually act on those impulses that these videos can give you. Because seeing shiny new gear all the time can make your current setup feel inadequate. It can make you start to think about, ooh, how would I incorporate this into my setup? And that's fun. I think that way too but it's gotta be tempered. And if you go further into the discourse about gear, either via a comment section or a forum or something like that, once again, I see people get really heated over stuff that in the big picture, not a big deal. And once again, this just inflates the importance of the gear itself in your own brain. But of course, a lot of consumption of gear reviews is either I'm already planning on making a purchase or I'm just window shopping. And so really, that's fine, but there are some more aspects that the reviews themselves bring in that can reinforce consumerism. And I, as a gear reviewer, am absolutely guilty of these just as much as any of my friends and peers. Because here's the thing about people who review gear as a serious pursuit on YouTube. We have a lot of gear. Too much gear. I have too much gear. I'm staring at a shelf of more gear than I could possibly need and very little of it I want to get rid of because I want to make a variety of content. I want to do deep dives on all this stuff. And so I don't want to just have one device and then pigeonhole myself into it. You know, for a while I've been known as the Novation Circuit guy, which I'm honored by. To be clear, I really like that and I still love the circuits and I still love championing that community, but I don't want to pigeonhole myself in case that gear ever stops being relevant. I want to review multiple pieces of gear and cover stuff that the audience requests. But it means I have a lot of gear. It means I keep a lot of gear just sitting around that I don't use most of the time. And if I was only making music, I could sell most of it. It's here purely for the content, or at least that's what I tell myself, because here's the other thing. Gear reviewers, since we're buying gear to make content, can justify gas. Oh, it's for the content. I want this piece of gear. I'm lusting after this piece of gear. Oh, I could make a video about it. Boom, that purchase is justifiable. It's a tax write-off. That's great. And once again, that creates a feedback loop that leads to creators having more gear than they need. And 
Maybe if you accept that, that's fine, but you would be surprised at the amount of confusion I've seen online of people saying, oh, I don't like such and such music production YouTuber. They hoard gear and they are very consumerist. And it's like, well, yeah, it's their freaking job to have gear and to review it. You don't think that Marquez Brownlee or Linus Tech Tips are just using all of the tech and hoarding all the tech that they have. No, they're reviewing it. They're the press. It's their freaking job. But it does create the perception that hoarding gear and having a shit ton of it is a normal thing that normal musicians do. And some musicians, yeah, they consider it normal. For me personally, I think that it can be taken too far very quickly. And seeing that all the time, if you watch a lot of music production YouTube, can normalize having too much gear. And finally, there's the issue of positive reviews. Positive reviews, even if they are completely 100% honest and objective, can still be misleading because they could make you think that a piece of gear is meant for you when it isn't. Maybe you would hate it because us gear reviewers, we've used a lot of gear. A lot of it tends to bleed together. You start to notice just how much of this stuff is really damn similar. And so stuff with extra interesting feature starts to really stand out. And more importantly, I review a lot of groove boxes and as such, I have gotten very comfortable with the workflow of a lot of groove boxes, whether that is tracker style workflows with step sequencers or menu diving or all that kind of stuff. That stuff that I've gotten very used to, to the point that I have to be really careful when talking about how intuitive something is, because something that's intuitive to me might not be intuitive to someone who's not spent a ton of time in this ecosystem. That's something I am very careful to be very aware of, but even then, Take the stuff I say with a grain of salt, please. But of course, there's one big counterpoint to my idea that gear reviews reinforce consumerism. Gear reviewers try the gear, so you don't have to. You watch a review and a reviewer tries out a piece of gear, its workflow, its limitations, its strengths, all that kind of stuff, and reviews it, gives you an opinion on it, and that can often help you rule out pretty quickly whether it's for you or not. 90% of the gear reviews that I watch tell me, yeah, I am correct in thinking, eh, this is probably not for me. And the other 10% help me decide, yes, this has exactly what I'm looking for. Let's go for it. That's super useful. Once again, that's a service. And without gear reviews, I think a lot of more people would be forced to just buy something and see how it goes. So all that out of the way, I hope this didn't come off as too preachy and too like on my high horse because like I make this stuff. The reason I'm making this video is because I worry about the impact that my videos have on other people. I worry that they justify shopping addictions and irresponsible spending and distraction from actually creating music. And that's the last thing that I want. So this is all stuff I want to put into your brain to help you watch gear reviews with a more critical eye, not just to make sure that the reviews are watching are objective and honest, but that they're not warping your priorities and your perception of your own setup. So that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see some more kind of minimalism content, you can click or tap up over here and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching.